winter can't keep them away. The beach offers the people here a brief respite. But no one can outrun the reality of life in Gaza. The territory is one of the most impoverished places on Earth, and it's only getting worse. In 2012, the United Nations predicted Gaza would be unlivable by 2020. Was the UN right? Um Ahmed al Hissi is a refugee in Al Shati camp in Gaza City. She lives with six members of her family in just one room. Most of Gaza's two million people are refugees who rely on food aid, but Um Ahmed says she doesn't receive anything. Life for Palestinians in Gaza has become unbearable, growing steadily worse since Israel and Egypt blockaded the territory in 2007. Israel says the siege is necessary for security reasons, but the UN calls it collective punishment. There are severe restrictions on who and what can enter or leave the Strip. In the early years of the siege on Gaza, Israel worked out the minimum number of calories people here needed in order to survive. One former advisor to the Israeli government is quoted as saying, the idea is to put the Palestinians on a diet, but not to make them die of hunger. Adnan Abu Husna is the media advisor for the United Nations Relief Works Agency. Most Gazans rely on UNRWA for their daily needs, from food to healthcare and education. The blockade it is the main challenge that UNRWA is facing. I'll give you one example that in 2000, the uh, number of beneficiaries who used to receive food aid from UNRWA it was about 80,000. Now you are talking about 1.1 million. Was why that happened because of the blockade, because of the, the great destruction of the private sector, the main employer for Palestinians. Before the blockade, thousands of Palestinians from Gaza worked in Israel, but that ended when the siege began. Now more than 50% of the population is out of work. Mohammed Massoud's son Bilal was shot by an Israeli sniper while taking part in the Great March of Return protests last year. After being bedridden by the injury, he became depressed and took his own life. Even the water in Gaza is dangerous. 97% of it here is not safe for human consumption. Families are forced to buy expensive bottled water or rely on aid agencies. Almost a quarter of sickness in Gaza is caused by waterborne diseases. Dr. Ahmed Al Hillas is a groundwater expert and says this is an environmental disaster. We produce now in the Gaza Strip more than 2,200 tons of solid waste air every day. So you can imagine how many or how much or how the amount, how much you amount of, of this toxic material which uh, by way or another can reach your groundwater aquifer and contaminate your soil. The UN says the prediction they made about Gaza in 2012 became a reality years ago. 
Palestinians here can only wonder if they can begin to live again. Haider Abbasi, The Newsmakers, Gaza.